Okay, I'm going to go from sites to some information you'll need to do what we call pattern matching analysis in RBMOD. A pattern matching analysis is a common type of analysis um, for situations where you're looking for a certain type of sound. Say you're looking for a specific species and you have many, many hours of recordings that species may not be something that vocalizes frequently, but you're wondering if it's present. Um, instead of searching through hundreds of hours or many, many hours of recordings um, and listening to them, you can use um, this analysis to find some common sounds that animal might make. And so um, to do that, you're gonna first need to select um, some species that would be, that you'd be looking for in your analysis. So um, there's this option here for species. And in this project, there are already some species um, added to the project. Um, and so these are some common Pacific Northwest species. And something you, that's useful to know is you can add a species more than once if you're adding different types of sounds. And so to add a species, you um, click the plus sign and then you start to type in the Latin name of your species. I'm gonna type in the Latin name of American Robin which is tur Turtus migratorius. And so once you have found your species, you select it, but you also are going to need to select the type of vocalization. And this is a sort of a default list of vocalization types. It doesn't fit every kind of situation, but it's, it's good enough for most species. And so there's common song, courtship song, and then a variety of other types of vocalizations. And so, we have, I believe, common song already added. I might want to um, be adding calls. There's different kinds of calls that robins make and I'll, add, I'll start with simple call. And so you select that vocalization and you hit select and then you'll see that simple call has been added to my species list. We have tortoise migratorious common song and simple call. So once we've added that into the project, we can then upload templates or select templates to, to add to the project. And so we already actually, this project already has a number of templates added. And so um, of calls and songs of some common Pacific Northwest birds, we can then actually create templates. And there's a couple ways you can do that. Because RBMON's kind of new, there is a limited set of public templates. And these templates come from other RBMON projects. So if you make your project public and you make a bunch of, or even one template for your project, other RBMON users can search for templates from these public projects and use templates that other people have made for their project, which makes this very transparent and efficient. It's really powerful. Right now, there aren't a lot of projects and there aren't a lot of Pacific Northwest birds to be found in the public templates. Um, another way is to, find a recording, you'd need to know the location and everything of it, but you can actually upload a recording of the, the focal sound you want to make and use that recording to search. Um, or you can actually make templates within your project and all of these templates have been made within the project. Sometimes you're looking for something really rare and you can't make the template within the project because you're trying to find maybe just one vocalization or to find the vocalization in the hundreds of hours of recordings might be really difficult. But you may have been out of the site recording and you got a really good vocalization of that species at a nearby site or on a different occasion and, and you can upload it. So um, to generate a template from the recordings themselves, you can go into your recordings and say that we know what recording the vocalization is in. You can um, open that recording. You can view it in the visualizer. So this is a spectrogram of one of the recordings from an audio moth. And you can, these are all one minute clips of sound. So when we upload these recordings to RBMON, it breaks them up into one minute components. And you can look for your sound. And um, so I'm just going to play a little bit of this. I know that these, these marks here are spotted tohi, um, but there may be other sounds in here. Okay, and so 
So the spotted toe is a really good example. It's this explosive sort of sound. And so say I want to generate a template of spotted tohi, they're actually in this menu over here, I'm stop the playing, um, is an option for template. And so you can select template and then go into your recording and you select as closely as possible that specific sound. And then you're going to give it a name and call it Tohi. I, I tend to do it by its Latin name. And then you have to tell it what species. And it already has to be in your species list. That's why we went through that first piece. Um, and then this is, this is a type of song. And so we've already done one template like this. So we may have to call it two and we can select create template. Now, sometimes it makes sense, something to know about these visualizations is it makes sense often to zoom in a bit so that you're selecting the pieces you want to select. And most bird sounds are below the 12 kilohertz frequency range, but you can zoom in to whatever frequency range along the y-axis. And then this is time on the x-axis. And here's our selection. And so if I had zoomed in more carefully, I would have made a more careful selection. But it's the same process. And now I've created a template for that sound. And so if I go back into um, data, I can look at my templates and I can look, oh, there's my second um, template for Spotted Tohi song. The next step will be discussed in another video.